Well, hello, welcome to the training. This is how to become an author faster and easier using a simple five-step framework. Welcome. Welcome to the training. Hello, thank you. You're welcome. Make sure you have your pen and paper ready to go. Uh, I do. Awesome. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. It is after 7.30. We're gonna start on time and we're gonna end on time. So welcome. Go ahead and mute yourself. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to become a successful author faster and easier using a simple five-step framework, which I created for myself seven years ago. So I'm going to be teaching you what I teach my clients and what I teach myself. Every single time I get ready to write a book, I use this five-step formula. So hello, welcome. My name is Latasha L.T. Jimerson. I am an author, teacher, book coach, motivational speaker. I am also an editor. I am also a mom of three daughters. And I am a teacher of 20 years. I've taught history. I've taught English. And I've taught everything from middle school to high school. And I even taught one summer. Uh, first grade for students with autism. So I have been in education for a long time. Uh, my The love of my life is teaching. I can teach all day long um, and it doesn't matter to who as long as there are people to listen. So thank you for being here tonight. I know that it is a holiday evening and I appreciate you being here with me. You could be anywhere. You could be hanging out. You could be doing the barbecue, which you may have already done. Um, you could be hanging out with friends, family, but you are here with me and you are going to learn how to stay consistent and to finally get your book done so that you can do some other things that you want to do in the world. All right, so go ahead and mute yourself, grab your pen and your paper. We're going to be taking a lot of notes. I'm going to be sharing with you some uh, recent statistics that have to do with publishing. I'm gonna be sharing with you some uh, stories and case studies from people that I know and from my own clients. And it's gonna be a fun time. If you have any questions, I want you to put your questions in the chat. Do not hesitate to put the question there. And I will answer the question at the end of the training. Okay, so why do I talk so much about books? Why do I love books? Why do I think everybody should have a book? Like, why did I start creating books in the first place? And so I want to share some statistics with you from a post that I recently found on LinkedIn. And it says, establish authority and credibility. And it talks about publishing a book does position you as an authority in your field and that authority carries professional weight. Michael Schultz, principal of the Wesley Hills Group, conducted a study in 2006 with business book authors to find out if a book helped the author or their business. Schultz reported the vast majority of the authors we surveyed, 96%, said they did realize a significant right? Pay attention to that number. That's 96% said that they did realize a significant positive impact on their businesses from writing a book and would recommend the practice to other people. Additionally, reporters seeking expert quotes for their articles or stories can discover you through your book and seek you out for a quote. It's a common reaction to view someone as an authority on a subject and say they wrote the book on it when we recognize their expertise. So what I want you to do 
in the chat is I want you to drop a one if you've ever thought about writing a book. And that should be everybody if you're in this training, because those are the folks that are on my email list. They're people who are thinking about writing a book, right? So I see Cynthia dropped a one. Shara dropped a one. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shara. I had to remember and, and tell myself it's Shara. Shara. <laughs> Who else? There's, there's only two people in here that are thinking about writing a book. Drop a one if it's you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to keep on rolling. Okay, this is one of my clients, Jessica Walter. She published a book back in 2020 during the pandemic. And one of the things that she wanted to talk about in her book was corporate burnout. She had spent half of her life in corporate America, and she experienced burnout herself. Throughout that process of experiencing burnout, she was like, you know what? There's got to be something that I could do to help other people. And so she put together an actual company and she came to me and she said, I have this idea for a book, but I'm not sure which book I need to write. And so we talked a lot about the different kinds of books talked about which books are relevant. And I said, well, what is your expertise? And she said, I'm not sure, but I have a coaching company. And I said, well, what do you do with your coaching company? Well, I, I coach people who are uh, coming out of corporate or still in corporate and they are, are experiencing burnout. They don't know exactly how to deal with it. I said, okay, so hello, you need to write a book about how to overcome corporate burnout. And so here we go. This book was produced in uh, December of 2020. And by January, this book had landed her a five-figure client into her coaching business. And if you Google Jessica Walther, her company will come up. It's called Innovate. And it is a thriving company where she helps people overcome burnout. And it's based on her story. It is based on what she's been through. And so if you are an expert, which most of you are because you're on my email list, if you're an expert, if you are a coach, if you're a teacher, if you are a mom, a mentor, if you are someone who has ever given advice to anyone else, then you have an expertise, you have knowledge, you have wisdom, and it should be in a book. Okay. All right. So let's drop a two. If you can relate to Jessica's story, if you've ever been through any kind of burnout or any kind of stress or any kind of negative situation. And I see your question, Cynthia, I'm going to answer it towards the end. All right. We've got a two, a two. All right. If you've been through any type of stressful situation, Anything in life that was difficult to overcome. Okay. All right. So tonight you are going to learn how to take your expertise and your knowledge, and you're going to learn how to package it into a book. And so I'm going to be teaching you my five-step framework. Okay. My five-step framework is called RAPS. And the RAPS framework stands for Writing, revising, advertising, publishing, and selling. These are the five parts or the five phases of my publishing system. This is what I use every time I get ready to write a book. I use this framework. Anytime one of my clients gets ready to write a book, they use this framework. Go ahead and take a picture of this slide. 
If you have a pen and a piece of paper, you're going to be writing. You'll be taking a lot of notes because I'm going to break down for you what is required for every single phase. And yes, these are steps. They, they are sequential steps, but they are also things that you're going to have to be thinking about all the time. So for example, just because you might be done with the writing stage, doesn't mean that you're not always going to be revising. Same thing for revising. Once you get out of the revising stage, you're going to step into advertising, publishing, and selling, but you're also going to keep in the back of your mind that you're still revising all the time because you're always going to get better. Okay, this is my client, Kelvin Bell. I call him KB. And KB published this book on the left. It's called Eden Centricity, an inside out journey. And it has to do with strength, wealth, intimacy, acceptance, healing, and joy. These are the things that he had been writing about over the past 20 years of being a PK. He's a, he's a preacher kid. And he had this book written for 20 years before he met me in 2020. And he said, you know what? I have a story. I need to get this story out. I don't know what it's going to look like. He says, I don't even have a cover. I don't have a name. But I know that this book has been on the bookshelf for too long. It's collecting too much dust. And I'm ready to let it out. So he came into my program. I taught him the rap system. He used it. And 30 days later, he had this book in his hands. We did a complete launch party for him with his wife in the room. He wrote a beautiful dedication to his wife, Brenda, at the beginning of the book. And he read it out loud at his launch party. I called him out. I put him on the spot. I said, read the dedication that you wrote to your beautiful wife. And she didn't know anything about it. During the launch party, everyone in the room, family, friends, uh, church mates, colleagues, co-workers, neighbors, everyone inside of his home, they were in tears by the time he finished reading that dedication to his wife because he talked about all kinds of things, you know, strength, intimacy, acceptance, healing, joy, wealth, all the things that he's been able to build with his wife. He wrote that in the dedication and it was so touching. Everybody in the room was like, ah! But he didn't just stop there. He finished the book in, um, he started it in July, 2020. We finished it in August or uh, September, 2020. And he went on to create a whole Bible study based on this book because this book is based on his Bible studies. And so he created a series of talks, went on to do multiple other anthologies with other authors and today he's actually pursuing his passion in music. And so if you have a story, you have expertise, you have something that's been inside of you for so long, you're like, man, I'm just, I'm pregnant with this thing. I'm pregnant with these ideas. I just don't know what, what to do or where to go. You're in the right space because I can help you with the entire process from idea, right? Kelvin already had a manuscript written out, but you don't have to have anything. Tonight, you've got a pen and a piece of paper. And by the end of this training, you are going to have some ideas written down. And you may already have a manuscript somewhere, but you may decide and you may think, huh, at the end of this training, you might consider maybe that story is not the one that needs to come out right now. How do I know? Because I've published eight books and my first book probably should not have been published. If I'm being quite honest with you, I probably should not have published that first book because it was not the book that the world would ask me for, right? And so I'm going to share a little bit more about that later and tell you what that means. Let's just keep on rolling. All right, so this is a workshop that I conducted when I used to live in Las Vegas. I used to live in Las Vegas, Nevada. And what I did every time I visit another city, 
I go and I visit the public library. I ask the public library, hey, do you have a space? Um, do, you, do you ever do any events for authors? Is there a space that I could have to where I could teach a small workshop? And so at this particular library, she said, yes. Coordinator said, absolutely. This is how much it costs to rent the room. You know, we could put the flyers up for you. We can help you promote the event. And yeah, it's going to be wonderful. And so this was a Saturday afternoon. I brought in uh, a bunch of my books and a bunch of my worksheets because I'm a teacher. So I always got worksheets. And I sat there for three hours and I helped these folks come in and sit down and map out their entire book idea in one sitting, one three hour session. They left with a paper full of ideas and they knew exactly what they were gonna be writing in their books as they were on their way home. And so this is one of the things that you can do as an, a self-published author. You can go to a library and you can ask the librarian, hey, is it okay if I come in and I do a training on whatever it is that, that you're an expert at. And this is why you need to know what, you, what your expertise is, because if these folks are gonna be willing to help you out, they need to know what you're promoting. And so this is one of the reasons why I say my first book should not have been published because I would never have been able to hold a workshop based on my first book at least not a profitable workshop, right? Because when you host these events, you want to get people into the room so that you can share with them and you can pour into them, but you can also gain a client. Let's face it, no one wants to write a book that nobody is gonna buy, right? And you want not just a reader or a customer, you actually want a client which is someone who you can support and you can walk through their journey and help them. Okay, so notice at the top left corner, there is the, the uh, W. I want you to drop in the chat, what does the W stand for in the RAPS formula framework? I'm gonna say formula or framework, it's the same thing. What does the W stand for? Yep, I see one person says writing, okay, writing. What does the W stand for? All right, you are correct, it is writing. Okay, so let's talk about writing. These are the top 10 reasons why people never write their book. In fact, 80% of adults in America say that they wanna write a book, but 1%, I want you to write that down, 80% of American adults say they wanna write a book but 1% actually puts the pen to the paper and writes the book, okay? I want you to just think about that for a second. 80%, eight out of 10 people say that they wanna write a book, but 1% actually writes the book. Would you like to be a part of that 1%? Drop a yes in the chat if you would like to be a part of that 1%. That 1% of people, those are the folks who are committed to their word. Those are the people that are impeccable with their word. They do what they say they're gonna do. They have integrity. Those are the people that are successful. They hit all of their targets on their, in, their income goals, their relationship goals. When you are impeccable with your word, that means you set goals and you meet them because you hold yourself accountable. 
Okay, so number one, we've all struggled with these excuses or reasons. Um, number one is the lack of time. Many writers juggle writing with full-time jobs. Okay, put a thumbs up in the chat if you have a full-time job. Actually, it's going to be thumbs up. Yep, there we go. Yep, 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 full-time job. Okay, absolutely. So many writers juggle writing with a full-time job, family responsibilities, and other commitments. Finding consistent blocks of time to write can be challenging. And this comes from selfpub.com um, and Link's publisher, if you want to go look that up. That's number one. When I first started writing books in 2017, I was teaching full time. I was a social studies teacher. I was teaching uh, seventh and eighth grade. And I was extremely busy because I also had three children, two teenagers and one in elementary school. So I literally had stair steps. I had an elementary school daughter, I had a middle school daughter, and I had a high school daughter. So one was driving and one was learning how to ride a bike. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And I was writing books in the middle of the night when they went to bed, early in the morning before they got up, on the weekends, on the holidays, days like this, like holidays, those were the days that I was like, okay, I don't have to work today. Okay, kids. I'm going to have you hang out with your cousins. I am going to be over here writing my book. That's literally how I organized my life was, okay, kids, you're going to go hang out with your cousins. I'm going to sit here in front of this computer and I'm going to do some writing. If, if you want to do it, there's a will, there's a way. If you have the will, God will give you the way and you will get it done. So number one is not an excuse. We all have 24 hours a day. And all of the most successful people in the world, the one, one, one percent, they have exactly the same number of hours that we do. There's no excuse. Okay. So let's go on to number two. Number two is perfectionism. Writers often get stuck trying to perfect every sentence and chapter before moving forward. Oh my gosh. I'm so guilty of this. Raise your hand if you're guilty of being a perfectionistic person, trying to get everything exactly right. Raise your hands up. I'm raising two hands because that's me. This can lead to endless revisions and difficulty completing the manuscript. Yep. So let me look at the chat and see who's in here like me, perfectionist. Yep. Yep. I see one perfectionist. Two. I see two perfectionists. Absolutely. You can get stuck trying to be perfect, right? So perfectionism, just we need to understand that when you are a self-published author, you have the ability to go back and revise your manuscript and you can always republish it again, okay? That's the beauty of being able to publish your own book is that if you do find something, there have been a couple of books that I've published. I've published eight um, and the first three, there were errors, but I had already put them out. And guess what I did? When someone brought it to my attention that there was an error or when I discovered an error, I went back and re redid my manuscript, got someone to help me go through it again, put it back up. And guess what? I just went to those readers and I said, hey, here's a new copy of this book. It's a revised version. It's better than new. And guess what those readers said? Okay. Like it wasn't a big deal. So get perfectionism out of the way because it's not going to be able to stop you from being successful with your book. Okay. Number three, many writers suffer from imposter syndrome, doubting their abilities and the value of their work. This can be a significant barrier to your progress. Now, 
We all have struggled with self-doubt. Drop a three in the chat if you've ever experienced self-doubt. You can be the most experienced person at work. You could be the leader. You could be um, the CEO, the founder. Yeah, you could be the, the grandma, like the person in the room that has the most wisdom, the matriarch, right? And you could still <clears throat> doubt your abilities and doubt the value of your work. It's just something in your mind. You have to just overcome it and say, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway because no one's perfect, right? So let's let's just cross out number three. Number four, procrastination. Writers may procrastinate due to fear of failure. This number three and number four go together like this, okay? Um, writers may procrastinate due to fear of failure or because they find it difficult to maintain focus and discipline over long periods of time. Okay, now I, I want you to be honest because I created this training for you. And there were several people that signed up for this training. And you see how many people are in the room. This is exactly what that other statistic is about, right? All of those 80% of the people say they want to write a book. And then when it comes down to it, that 1%, you are a part of that 1% already because you just showed up, right? I sent this to everyone on my email list. And I sent this to everyone across all my social media platforms, including LinkedIn. And you see who's in the room. Right. So if you have been struggling with procrastination, congratulations, because you found a way to overcome it today. And so I want you to get grounded in this moment. Put your feet flat on the ground. Put your hands by your side. Breathe. Jump into your own body. Right. Give yourself a pat on the back because you did not procrastinate on this task today. You showed up here today. Regardless of what's happening, you might be having company over. There might be people in the backyard. And you decided to set aside time to sit down and focus on your writing goals. And a big part of the writing goals, a big solution to procrastination is getting around other people who have the same goals right? Getting around like-minded people who can hold you accountable and not in a negative way, but you can get around, you've got to get around people who are struggling with the same thing, right? Because this, this can be a struggle. This can be very, very difficult to do. This is not something that lots of folks like to do. It's like a marathon. You don't see a whole bunch of people in the world doing marathons, right? Or running track. We're doing the Olympics, right? This is something that a lot of people just don't do. They say they're going to do it, but they don't do it. Okay, so pat yourself on the back because you didn't procrastinate today. You're here. Okay, congratulations. Number five. Now, this is a serious uh, problem for a lot of people, but I have a wonderful solution for you for number five. Okay, and you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So number five is a lack of clear direction. Without a solid outline or a plan, writers can become lost in their own narrative, unsure of where the story is going or how to get there. Okay, go like this, put your hands here in the temple of your forehead and give yourself a little massage. Okay, give yourself a little massage. Go here to the front, give yourself a little massage. Okay, go over to your ears, give yourself a little massage. Back and forth, back to the front. This is kind of like tapping, but this is literally giving yourself a massage. Okay, and tell your brain, okay, brain, it's okay, stop overthinking. Okay, it's okay. You literally have to tell yourself, stop overthinking because we spend too much time in our head. And there's no reason to do that because I'm here 
with a clear direction, a clear plan, and an outline for you. So this is, this is the reason why you do not need to stress out. You do not need to worry because there are people in the world that have a solution for every one of your problems. So you don't need to stay in here. This is where we start to get anxiety. We start to feel stressed. We start to go over and over and over thinking the same thoughts when we get stuck in our head. Okay. Drop out of your head, drop into your body, get into this moment and allow me to share with you the solution to your problems. Okay. Number six, burnout. We talked about my um, client, Jessica. She was, when she came to me, she was extremely burnt out. She had no idea what to do. She was frustrated. She was stressed. She, she's just like, she had all these ideas and they were all scattered around in her brain. And I said, okay, we got to get this stuff on paper. That's why if you have paper pencil today, paper pen, you're going to be using it a lot. Okay. I'm going to be challenging you. Okay. So number six says writing a book is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Writers can burn out from the intense effort required in the head, especially if they push themselves too hard without any breaks. Okay. So tonight we're going to have a couple of brain breaks because it is going to be pretty hectic with you writing on, on paper. Okay. Number seven, distractions. Modern life is full of distractions from social media to household chores, which can interrupt writing time and break concentration. All right. Put in the chat, how many minutes did you spend writing today? And be honest, if it's zero minutes, it's just zero minutes. Put in, put in the chat, how many, okay, good, good. How many minutes did you spend writing today? Okay, very good. Good, good. And this is the reason why we have to stay in community with people who are like-minded, okay? Because there are times when we will get zero minutes of writing done and that's okay. All right, so number eight, fear of criticism. This one is kind of like number three and number four. Writers may fear that their work will be poorly received by readers and critics, which can paralyze their progress, okay? There are very mean people in the world. And so number eight is a very real reason not to put anything out because so many people can be negative. But I'm going to teach you how to overcome that, okay? Number nine, the lack of motivation. The initial excitement of starting a new project can fade over time making it difficult to stay motivated through the more tedious aspects of writing. Okay, drop a nine in the chat if you've ever felt lack of motivation. You had the idea. It was awesome. You got inspired. You, you told someone they were excited for you. And then the next day you were like, oh, I actually have to start writing. Oh. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I'm like, well, I've got a new project. I've got an idea. I have a vision for something. And then the next day it's like, oh shoot, now I actually have to take action on that. And that's why you have to be careful and you have to be impeccable with your word because whatever you say goes. Okay, number 10 is the final one. Family friends and financial pressures can impact a writer's ability to stay motivated and focused. Okay. So number 10 is just like number seven, because there are so many distractions. We just can't get it together. So here's what I want you to do with your, with your pen and your paper. I want you to write down the top three out of this list of 10, the top three issues that you have dealt with over the past six months, okay? Over the past six months, what are your top three, and write this on your paper, your top three problems, excuses, reasons why you have not been able to sit and write. Be very honest with yourself.
All right, so you've got your top three. Now, what is your top one? I want you to actually type out the phrase instead of putting the number. So if your top one struggle is self-doubt, I just want you to type self-doubt in the chat. If your top reason is burnout, just type burnout. If it's distractions, just type distractions. If it's fear of criticism, write fear of criticism, lack of motivation, external pressures, perfectionism, lack of time, lack of clear direction. Okay, it is procrastination, distractions. All right. Okay, let's keep rolling. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to overcome procrastination and distractions. I'm going to give you some very clear steps on how to continue to move forward despite these things. Okay, so here's my client, Antonietta Magoey. She is a high school teacher. She works in New York City and she commutes from Pennsylvania every day. She's also a caretaker for her, for her grand, uh, not grandchildren, for her parents. And her parents are in their 80s, so she takes care of them. She also has two children at home, and she's married. Her desire was to get her book out in 90 days or less with minimal stress. And that, that is literally what I do. And we were able to accomplish that, even though she's a busy teacher, she's a busy wife, she's a busy mom, and she's a caretaker for her parents. She was still able to get her book done because she did not allow any of those excuses to get in her way. She followed the formula. She went through the steps and she got it done. This is my secret weapon. Okay. You can take a picture of this. Um, at the end, if you stay all the way till the end, I have a free gift and it is this right here, which is a game changer for your writing. For people who are in their heads, constantly thinking, lots of ideas, it's important that you structure your ideas into a very detailed outline. Now, there is a pre-step. Before you do your outline, you have to brainstorm your topics. Because if you try to do an outline and you're not really clear about your topic, you're going to have to start over and over and over again. So the step before the outline is to just take out a piece of paper like you do now and write down all of the things that you could possibly write a book about. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to take two minutes. I'm going to put two minutes on the timer and you are going to write out a list of 10 topics that you could possibly write about starting now. Go ahead and go. 10 topics that you can write about in a book, things that you are an expert on. Two minutes.
Okay, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, I want you to type in the chat your top two. What are the top two topics that you could write a book about? These have to be topics that, that you're an expert on. It has to be things that you could literally talk about for hours without any notes, without any handouts, without any books. What are your top two topics? All right, I see caregiving and compassion. Okay, what else? All right, decluttering and self-care. Excellent topics. Okay, now I want you to type in there in the chat. What is your number one topic out of that entire list? You've narrowed it down to two. Now narrow it down to one. Okay, self-care, excellent. Caregiving, okay, excellent. Okay, so now, now that you have your number one topic, go ahead and take, take a picture of this outline because this is your next logical step. Once you've decided your topic, then you're going to need to create an outline so that your book flows from the outline. The outline is the basis of your book. It's the bare bones, bare minimal structure of your book. When you follow the outline, you will be very clear about what it is that you plan to write in those chapters. And we'll come back to the outline again a little bit later. Okay, let's keep on rolling. So again, here's my client, Antonietta McGoey. Not only was she able to write a book through the 90-day process that we went through, but she used this process to teach her daughter how to write a book. So here they are celebrating the day that she finished her book. And on another occasion, her daughter brought out her book and we did a whole separate celebration for her. And it was beautiful because everything that she was watching, everything that she saw her mom do, she repeated the steps. And so if you have kids, drop a heart. If you have kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews, the beautiful thing about learning is that you can pass this knowledge on and it can continue to be passed on forever. So the steps that I'm teaching you tonight, they are repeatable steps. Once you learn these steps, you're not gonna be able to unlearn them. You're gonna be able to show other people how to do the process. You're gonna be able to do the process repeatedly for yourself. And that's the beauty of, of knowledge. It's the gift that just keeps on giving and you just keep getting better and better and better. On the left hand side is a picture of a clubhouse room. If you've ever been in clubhouse, drop a thumbs up. If you've ever been on clubhouse, that was the big thing. 2020, 2021, and even 2022 was the big audio app. We were all in there, especially as teachers who were doing Zoom school at the time. We were in there having all kinds of conversations, chatting it up and having a great time. But what we were also doing was we were promoting Antonietta's book. We were very subtly uh, sharing with people what she had written about inside of her book. And we literally called the clubhouse room what is a toxic 
relationship because that was the topic of her book, which was about a toxic relationship that she had with one of her siblings in a family of six. And she's the baby. And she talked about her experience growing up um, in a toxic environment. And she literally put the book under a different name. This is under a pen name. And when she finished writing it, she was like, oof, I feel such a relief. And she went on to write three or four or five other books using the same framework. So it, it is a process that you can do. And it's a process that will give you structure and guidance so that you don't have to know all the next steps. It's not your job to know all the steps. It's your job to follow the steps and see where it takes you. Okay, so now we're on R and drop in the chat. What does the R stand for? Who can remember the, the W was for writing? The R is for revising. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about revising. When you write a book, your book is going to go through multiple revisions, many, 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 many revisions. Okay. It's not just like you're going to just write it and it's done. Oh, there it is. It's beautiful. No, your outline is going to go through many versions. Your manuscript is going to go through what I call sloppy copy. Write that down. That's the first copy. Okay. The sloppy copy is the first one. Then you're going to do your rough draft, which, which will be based on your outline, which will be a little bit cleaner, okay? Then you'll do your next draft. So that's already three revisions. So the sloppy copy, the rough draft, the second draft, the fourth, and the fifth draft. By the time you're done with my process and it's gone through editing and back again to you and formatting and back again, you will have five versions of the same manuscript, okay? And the process moves quickly when you allow it to flow. If you get up in your head and you start putting up those mental blocks and mental barriers, it will take you a long time. <laughs> but if you allow the process to work, it'll flow, okay? On the bottom right is my client, Jean Reese. She wrote a book about leadership. And as you can see, her outline, as we were developing her outline, her outline was, was messy and disjointed, right? In the beginning, because this is the beginning process. But as we were working through it, you can see there are certain things that we started to color code and things, as we continued to work on it, things began became more and more clear, more fluid, more organized. And that's what happens when you get the support that you need with your writing. On the left is my client, uh, Miss Wright. And she literally is old school. I'm old school too, but she's also old school. She literally wrote everything out by hand in terms of her topics, her outline, her hook, her thesis, her body. She wanted to write it all out by hand. And I said, hey, that's even better. Let's go. She wrote it all out. Later on, she typed it out. We went over it again. She turned in her sloppy copy. And there you go, right? That's how the process moves. This is what revising is all about. It's literally working with your ideas, massaging your ideas, massaging your thoughts, moving things like puzzle pieces, right? Once you start getting things on paper and out of your head, we can easily start to manipulate these paragraphs and move things around and let everything just kind of flow together, okay? So that's revising. Um, what I provide for you as a resource, take a picture of this, I provide this because I always recommend that you get multiple opinions on your work. So I do several rounds of beta testing 
where I literally give people a portion of my book to read and I give them this form to fill out. It's called a reader's review worksheet and they fill out this information and it gives me amazing feedback on how my book sounds so far, right? I always advise my authors, do not write the entire book, write the first three chapters and then give the readers something, one or two chapters to read and then wait for the feedback. So now this is when you have to wait and breathe, right? First three chapters are done. Let people read it, bring it back, collect the feedback, okay? Collect the worksheets, see what they said, and then you continue working through it, okay? Now, this uh, reader's review worksheet is inside of my Your First Book workbook, where if you want to get the link to that workbook where it has everything that I'm talking about, all the tools and resources, let me know and I'll drop the link later for that. But let's just keep on rolling. This is Delshana Moore. She is the author of Run, Cover, Hide, The Voice of the Mishandled. This is actually her third book. Her first two books, she wrote on her own. This book, she came to me and she said, I don't know how to get this out because it's very emotional. It's very traumatic. I want it out. I need, this is a part of my healing process. And I said, absolutely, let's get to work. We talked about topics. We created the outline. Then we built the chapters. She used my process. We got, we got the book beta tested. Three months later, the book was out on the market. She was very, very happy. This is Dolores. She is a part of an anthology that I did with other teachers. This was called New Ways of Learning in 2020, Corona Struck. And it says, Corona Struck is a book about how to thrive in the face of adversity. The authors openly shared their perspectives and they shed light on how things shifted for them in 2020 during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. This book is a collection of personal stories from individuals who represent various walks of life. As educators, poets, parents, and writers, these storytellers offer unique perspectives on life in America in 2020. Readers will be enlightened by these stories and be inspired to tell their own. Once again, we used the five-step framework to get this book done eh, because it was a collaboration. It took us about nine months to do, honestly. And that was just because we had nine other people to collaborate with. It was a total of nine people. And once everybody submitted their chapters and we went through multiple uh, rounds of editing, we had beta readers read it. We got some really incredible feedback. And now this book actually is in the process of being sold to a couple of different school districts because um, Dolores went to the local library and she talked to one of the librarians and the librarian said, hey, wait a minute, can I buy this book? And she was like, of course. And then she said, hold up, um, this needs to go in the schools because this is literally like, this is like a history book. And Dolores was like, oh, wow. Her mind just got, wow, poop, poop like opened up like whoa this is a history book like this is not just some little pet project or hobby that we did we literally documented what life was like living as a teacher in the year 2020 and so this was a powerful work and once again we used the five-step framework to get it done professionally to get it out and looking good okay so some of you may be thinking, all right, what do, what do I need to do? Because I have all these ideas in my head, but I know at some point I'm going to need somebody to help me with the whole beta testing process. I'm going to need somebody to edit my book. I'm going to need somebody to format it and help me to upload it because I'm the writer. I just want to write and just not worry about all that heavy lifting. Okay, I've got something for you. I have a package for you, which is unlimited editing. It's a subscription service. 
And there are many, many, many benefits to being a part of this subscription service. I'm going to go into the details later. Right now, we're going to continue to move through those five steps. We went through the W, we went through the R, and now we're going to the A. Okay, so here's A. A is for advertising. I also say that A is for announcing. So type that in the chat for me. Both of those words, advertising and announcing. It's a double A. Yep, advertising, yep, announcing. Okay, so you've, you've already written your book. You've already done the revising. Now the book is, it's with the editor, okay? So you, you're not gonna see it for two to three weeks. What do you do while you're waiting for these three weeks? Are you just sitting on the sofa eating, uh, eating snacks and stressing out? Like, no, you are literally doing what Jackie Phillips is doing here, okay? Jackie Phillips wrote three books she hired me to edit her book number two, and she hired me to coach her through book number three. So if you look on the far right, it says Jackie Phillips, step-by-step, -step, 21 steps to enhance the winner in you. She hired me to do the proofreading and the editing on that book. And she says, working with Latasha has been a delight. I am working on my second book. I wrote, or this is her second, yes. I wrote the first book using another coach, but I had Latasha proofread and was impressed with those skills. It is quite evident that Latasha is a teacher and she instructs while she works with you. I am extremely pleased with how she is helping me to write. Jackie Phillips, business owner and educator. That was what she had to say about me helping her with that step-by-step -step book. The book in the middle is an upward climb toward faith. So I also helped her with this book in the middle. But what we did on the left hand side was we turned this book into a Facebook group. And she started having live a live talk series. So if you look up on the left hand side, it says Jackie Phillips was live. This was April 13th. I believe it was 2021. And she says it's a perfect week to share your faith. Who in your family needs to know the good news and will only be able to hear it from you? That was her topic for that day. I gave her a very big homework assignment while we were waiting for the editors to edit. We were waiting for that whole process to happen. I was like, no way are you going to sit home and stress out. No way you are going to do a 30 day live talk series and you are going to live stream into a Facebook group. She's like, what Facebook group? I said, the one that you're getting ready to create. She's like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, you're getting ready to grow this group. You're getting ready to blow it up. So when your book is done, hello, you will have people like this waiting on the edge of their seat. And so that's what I mean by announcing and advertising. You are literally talking to people about your book before it even drops so that you have an audience full of people to sell to. Many authors make this mistake of writing the whole book, getting it edited, publishing, putting it out, and then they try to do this whole marketing campaign. It's too late. It's too late. As soon as you come up with the idea to publish a book, you need to start talking to people about it. Start sharing, getting excited, building the momentum. Because the question that you want them to ask is, where's the link? Where's the book? Can we get the book? We've heard, we're, okay, we've heard about it. We want it. That's the attitude that you want. And that's what advertising and announcing is. You're getting the people ready to be ready to buy the book, okay? Drop a number four if you understand advertising and announcing. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go to the next part of the framework. Oh, by the way, this is advertising and announcing. When you come into my coaching program, we sit down and we do a 12 month plan. And we talk about what you're going to do from now to 12 months from now. And we backwards plan and we set your goal and your targets. And so this was Jackie's favorite part. She said this was the favorite part of the process because she didn't even have any idea what her goal was going to be 12 months from now. So I was forcing her to think, think forward, but plan backwards. And that's the teacher in me. That's, that's the teacher. Think forward, but plan backwards. What do you want to achieve in 12 months? Okay. So you got to back it up all the way to today. What do I need to be doing in this moment to move the needle a little bit closer to that 12 months? Okay. And this is my client, Dr. Joyce Brooks. She's an author, business owner, coach, and educator. And she says, as my coach, she's talking about LT. She helped me to publish my first paperback and two ebooks in three months. What, what, what the, what, what? This is the power of using my five-step framework. You can literally get a lot done if you focus. You don't need more time. You don't need more energy. You don't need more money. You need more focus. Write that down on your paper. I need more focus. What does focus stand for? I want you to write it like an acronym, like an acrostic poem from top to bottom. Big letters. Focus. Follow one course until successful. Okay. Follow one course until successful. Follow one course. That's what focus means. F-O-C-U-S. Follow one course until successful. Write that down. This is how my clients are able to get one, two, three, four books done in 90 days. Like, what the, what, who does that? Because we follow one course until successful. We follow the framework. We go through the five steps. We do it again and again and again. And pretty soon you're, you're just programming your mind to just push out books. If you want to, you could do that. You could just push out a bunch of books or you could push out a paperback, an ebook, an audiobook, a journal, a workbook, an online course. You start to, your mind, when, when I turn your mind on and get you flowing, your mind is going to be like a motor, an engine. It's just going to run and run. And it's okay because you're going to channel all that energy into positivity. Okay. All right. Here's another part of announcing. You're going to be sitting in a lot of Zoom rooms. Every single time you're in a Zoom room. These are my authors. These, this was my one of my group coaching programs. Every time I see one of my authors in the room, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to tell you, promote your book, sell your book, talk about your book, advertise your book, announce it, announce it, announce it, wherever you go, okay? Wherever you go. Here's some more Zoom rooms. And we were doing the Zoom thing throughout the pandemic, 2020, 2021, 2022. We're still doing Zoom rooms, Hell, we're on a Zoom room right now, we're having a good time. But guess what? You can still advertise and make announcements from the Zoom room, okay? There's my client, Jessica. There's Dolores. There's Antonietta. And there's Deshella Trammell. I'm gonna tell you about Deshella in a minute. All right, let's get into the P. We talked about the W, the R, the A. Now we're on the P. The P is publishing. Take a picture of this. You've got several different options of where you might want to publish. The first one is KDP through Amazon. That is the biggest 
most popular one that most people use. Okay, then number two is Barnes and Noble. And then there's a whole bunch after that, which I am not familiar with, to be honest with you, because at this point, I'm seven years in and I publish to my own platform. I don't even use other platforms anymore. But for those people that are just starting, if it's your first book, you absolutely want to use these platforms to get your name out there, to get some uh, visibility and to be able to really make your mark. OK. All right. So P, there's the P in the top left hand corner. That is for publish. OK. And here's the Shella Trammell. She published this book um, about her own personal story. It is called Breaking the Silence of Trauma. It just broke. It means trauma and the silence. She is not only an author, but she's also a public speaker. So you can see her at the left. She is speaking. Um, one of the names that she goes by is Elder D. Tramel. And she's sharing her experience. And this is in church. She's a speaker in the church. And so what her book was able to do for her is to allow her to go through a healing process to be able to share and open up and be even more vulnerable with the people that she served for the church. And so she walked through my framework. She did the same thing with the topic, the outline. She created a thesis. She created, you know, her main points. She went through the entire beta reading process and she got her book out. Took her probably, uh, I think she told me it took her 20 days to actually write the book. And then it took us 90 days for the book to be published, which is pretty standard with the whole uh, beta testing, editing, formatting process. It is about 90 days to go through that entire process with, with all of the feedback from um, uh, the beta testers. And so that process really for her, because she was going through a lot in her family, she experienced, I think she said 22 family members um, passed away and were sick from COVID. Her husband and her also ended up being in the hospital sick with COVID. And unfortunately, by the time her book was completely released and getting ready to launch, her husband passed away. And so we were never able to do a full book launch for this book, but stay tuned because she is definitely a thriver and she is, she's coming back. So stay tuned for Miss Dashella Trammell because she's pretty incredible. Okay, let's talk about traditional publishing versus self-publishing. Obviously, there are some major differences um, in the publishing world. Publishing takes on a whole nother meaning. Um, even five years ago, publishing was completely different. So I want to break down a few differences between traditional and self-publishing so that you know exactly the kind of process that you will be walking into if you choose to work with me to publish your book. So on the left-hand side is traditional publishing. On the right-hand side is self-publishing. And so on both sides, you write the book, okay? Traditional, you write the book. Self-publishing, you write the book. That's the same. Um, the second part is on the traditional side, you submit your book to the publisher. On the self-publishing side, you will start the publishing process. So you will have control over the entire process, okay? On the traditional side, you hope that it gets accepted, okay? On the self-publishing side, you have your book edited, formatted, and designed, okay? Again, you control the process. Over on the left, the publisher, uh, they, oh, the publisher will send you a contract if they decide to accept your manuscript, okay? On the self-publishing side, you choose where to self-publish, what platform. I mentioned those platforms before. And you can literally Google to find out what are the best platforms to self-publish on. And I'll tell you my secret at the end. If you stay to the end, I have a secret place where I publish my books now, um, which is my own space. 
and it's a lot easier and faster and cheaper for me to do it that way. Okay, on the traditional side, the publisher gets your book ready to market, edited, formatted, and designed. Okay, so that's the traditional side. On the self-publishing side, you choose where to self-publish it and you market your own book. Now, on the traditional side, what they also don't tell you is sometimes they offer people an advance. And what that advance is for, because I've, I've heard people say, oh my gosh, this publisher offered me $100,000. Should I take it? And I'm like, well, that depends. What, is, what, what, are the, <laughs> what are the terms of that contract? And so you really have to think about that. What are the terms of the contract? You have to read the contract. You have to be very careful uh, that you read the fine print and that the deal works out best for you. I am a component, a proponent of self-publishing because I am a bootstrapper. I am a DIY girl. I'm a control freak and I love to do things myself. I love to learn and then do and apply and get my own results. I don't like for my results to be up to someone else. I want to control the process. I want to control the outcome. And so I generally attract a lot of people that are just like me. So if you're a control freak, type that in the chat. If you're a DIY girl, DIY guy, type that in the chat. If you are the kind of person who just wants to oversee your entire process, type that in the chat for sure. Yep. Yep. I attract DIYers because like we just want to. We want to know, show me the process. What do I have to do? Let me go do it. And, and then I'll come back for some feedback if I need help. That's how I operate. That's how I operate my business. So I am not a publisher. I am a self-publishing coach. And I coach people through the process so that when you put your book out in the world, if you work with me, you're the publisher. Your name goes on the book as the author. And your name goes into whatever system you're publishing as the publisher. So you're the author and you're the publisher, which is so amazing. But you have a lot of decisions to make, right? You're in control, but there's a lot of responsibility. So let's get into that. Okay, here's another one of my clients, Miss Jessica Alessio. She is a high school principal in the state of Arizona. And when we met, we met on Instagram and she saw my profile. She saw my testimonials and she was like, wow. She's like, I have a book. I don't know what to do with it though. She's, she's like, I've had it published like for a couple of years now. And I said, well, what's holding you back, girl? So we went through the whole thought process. We talked about all those top 10 reasons why, you know, and she said, you know what, I'll be honest. She said, I have been dealing with imposter syndrome. She's like, I've just been thinking, who am I to become an author? I don't know if I'm good enough. I really don't know if anybody's going to really want to hear what I have to say. And I was like, girl, get over here. Let me tell you about yourself. And I told her about herself and I told her how incredible she is and how much knowledge, wisdom, and expertise that she needs to put into the world because the world needs it, especially in the area of education. Oh my gosh. By the time I was done with this woman, she was like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go big. And she did. She had a launch party. And if you look at her on the left, she has a whole banner that literally like covered part of the coffee shop where she had her launch party. So if you're the kind of person who's like, damn, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if my ideas are good enough. I don't know if anybody really is going to care about what I have to say. I don't, man, I don't even know, like, who am I? And you've got all these college degrees. You've got all these certifications and licenses. People have asked you to speak on stage you've done workshops, you've been a mentor, you've coached people, and you're still wondering whether you're good enough. Come over here because I'm going to get my feather and I'm going to help you get your life all the way right. <laughs> because if you're here, you're listening to the sound of my voice, you are spectacular and amazing. 
and your book needs to be in the world so people can be learning from you and paying you the money that you want to make. Come on now. Stop blocking your blessings. Stop blocking. Stop allowing all that negative chatter in the back of your mind to stop you from doing the things that you know you need to do. I am grateful. Jessica is grateful that she met me on Instagram that day. She is grateful because now she's out in the world. And she's got her own platform, her own audience. And in the beginning of that book, she's got two full pages of words of affirmation from her colleagues, her colleagues, her coworkers, her peers, her neighbors, her church mates, her family members. She's got two full pages of words of affirmation from those people. And I told her to do that. I said, we've got to get, we've got to get some words of affirmations for you because I need you to see on the page how much people love you, adore you, and respect you. And when she saw those pages, she was like, ah, oh my God. She knew it was there, but she didn't know it was there. She could sense it but she didn't know how great she was. And so that's what this process does. It takes you through and it really flips you inside out. This is an entire uh, spiritual, it's a physical, mental, emotional, but this is also a very spiritual um, experience that I walk you through because these are things that are coming out of your soul. And I don't take it lightly, I take it very seriously. Because if you are not guided in the right way, and if you are not nurtured and, and really supported, this process could be something that is not enjoyable. Okay? And I've heard lots of stories of people going through publishing processes that were not fun. Okay, so here's some statistics. Here's some data. We talked a little bit about self-publishing. We talked a little bit about traditional publishing. So this is from Red Sea. And it says ebook royalty rates across different publishing models. So on the left-hand side is royalties. And on uh, the bottom right is self-pub, small press, and traditional pub. Excuse me. And if you look at the bottom, it says 35% for ebooks outside the $299 to $999 price range. And then there's the double asterisk and it says on average, the royalties will vary by publisher. Okay, so as you can see, traditional published authors gain about 25% of the royalties from their eBooks. Okay, okay, okay. Um, small press, there, there's something called vanity press or hybrid press. These are companies that are sort of self-published, but then they're sort of traditional published. They kind of borrow from each um method, model, but I favor the self-pub. Look at the self-pub. The self-pub royalties is 70%. And in some cases, it's even higher. With the platform that I currently use, it's a 95% royalty rate that authors get now because I've learned, I've been in the game seven years. I've learned better. I do better. I teach better. And so uh, that 70% is now 95% for the people that are in my community. Okay, and here are two more of my clients, Dr. Terrence Meekins and Michelle A. Smith-Tynes. Um, I'm just gonna go through these very, very quickly so that we can get to the next letter, which is the S. Okay, so... Uh, Dr. Meekin says, Latasha helped me get started with my book and every month I have sold at least five copies. Great coach. There's nothing more exhilarating than getting an email that says that you got money going into your bank account. There's nothing more exhilarating, right? Show me the money. Type show me the money in the chat because that's what I want to do. I want to get you to the place where you produce a high quality book and your book is showing you the money. 
You want impact. You want to share with people your story. You want to share with people your knowledge, your expertise, and you want to bless people. You want to serve people. But dang on it, God dang it, I want you to have some more money in your bank account. Who wants some more money in your bank account? Put more money in your bank account. That's what I want for you. I want you to have more money in your bank account. And that's what Dr. Terrence Meekins is talking about. He says, at least every month, I've sold at least five copies. At least. That is the bare minimal. Okay, the bare minimal. On the right, Michelle A says, I am now on the path to success. And thanks to LT, I was able to retain my sanity and even gain serenity. She was very stressed out. Busy teacher, busy mom, lots going on. She says, I will always be grateful for the help she provided. I would recommend her services to anyone, anywhere. All right, here is once again, my client, Jean Reese. She's actually holding up a binder, which has the very first version of my workbook, which is my curriculum for my course. She's one of my originals because she's got that binder. That's what I used to create before I even uploaded anything to Amazon. I literally was self-publishing my own books, just using my binders. And it was, it was wonderful, but still worked. Then eventually I went ahead and put all that knowledge and information into a workbook and I published that on Amazon. And I was selling that on Amazon for a little while and then the, the sales dried up. And so now this book is only available through me. You can't even get it on Amazon anymore because I just learned that I could make more money making that book available through my own platform. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so let's talk about popular genres because you might be thinking, okay, all right, I see everybody with these books. I got a book. I'm not sure exactly what genre it's going to go under. I do plan on publishing on Amazon. Amazon's got all these different categories. How do I choose a category? Blah, 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 blah. All these different thoughts. Okay, let me bring your brain right down. Let's breathe, okay? All right, so these are the most popular nonfiction genres. My expertise is in nonfiction. I have a few fiction writers in my community. I have a few um, editors in my community that focus on fiction. Um, but the thing that is my jam that I love more than anything else is nonfiction, okay? So the number one, most popular type of book under nonfiction is biographies and memoirs. What are those? What are those? Personal stories of notable figures, including celebrity memoirs and historical biographies. Now, I used to teach people <clears throat> how to write their own memoir, and then I discovered that really, honestly, the big money comes when you're a celebrity. So I told you before, my first book, I should have never even published. That was a memoir. I learned very quickly that I needed to shift away from promoting, promoting the memoir and do something else. And that, that leads us to number two. Number two is self-help. That is super, super, super in my jam. So books that are focused on personal development, motivation, and mental health. Drop a two if your book is going to be self-help. Okay. Yep. So you're in the right place because my jam is self-help. The next most popular genre, which is also like really popular, really, really like big money makers is health and fitness. And those are topics that are covering diet, exercise, and wellness. The fourth most popular genre, and this is Amazon. Okay cookbooks, recipes, culinary techniques from various cuisines, okay? And number five, the fifth most popular nonfiction genre is 
religion and spirituality. Those are books that explore religious teachings, spirituality, and inspirational themes. So when you're choosing a genre, a category, your genre is like the big umbrella. Your categories are the little smaller themes underneath that. And that is important to you because you must choose the right keywords, the right categories, if you want to be ranked highly. You have to be very, very uh, intentional about the words that you choose and what categories you put your book under. You can be under three categories on Amazon. So there's one umbrella category, and then you can choose two subcategories. So keep that in mind if you want to publish. If this is your first book and you're going to go ahead and publish on Amazon, keep your categories at the top of mind. Okay? And this is why it's so important for you to brainstorm your topics before you create your outline. You see how all of this fits together? It's a lot. It's a lot, but there's a reason behind it. Okay, here's another one of my clients. Her name is Pamela Askew. She used my framework to create not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but nine eBooks on Amazon. And she did this within 90 days. As she was writing the fiction novel on the left, which is called Three Stages of Drama, she was doing this all at the same time. So when I tell you that the RAPS system is all at the same time, it's all at the same time, okay? All right, we're on the S. The S is selling, show me the money. The S is selling and it also stands for show me the money, okay? All right, so here's my client, Kyoko, and she says, this is her going live in my uh, Facebook group. She says, I want to share a win that I just made $20 in the most fun way, selling. She loves to sell. She's a sell sales machine now, now that she's gone through my process and we work together and she's gotten used to it. Now it's a lot of fun. In the beginning, she was like, I don't know about this. And now she's like, buy my book buy my book. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and this is my client, Gail. Her name is also Camille St. Charles, Mississippi. And she wrote a book called the Dessert Novella Suites. And that's her promoting her book in one of my Zoom rooms. And you already met Antonietta Mugoi. She's at the top left-hand corner. This is her launch party. Her launch party had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, including her and I, and it was a massive success because it launched her into the world of public speaking. And so now she gets asked to speak all over. She's famous. If you go to Clubhouse and you look for Antonietta Mogoi, she is like one of the most famous educators in all the different rooms on Clubhouse because she literally goes into other educators' rooms and she literally goes up to the stage and she lights up the whole room. And so this launch party was like her debut into the world after she wrote that book under her pen name, which I'll let you just Google that on your own. There's a story behind that. Okay, so we're almost done here. We're wrapping this up. So now we're going to talk about money. So sales, how much does an author make per book per year? All right, so here's what it says. And this information comes from, and you can take a picture of the slide, Mixell Book Writing is the website. Authors can expect to make book writing an only um, living resource if they have multiple books on the go know how to market them well, and have an active and enthusiastic fan base. That is, I, I want you to write that down and highlight that and put a star next to that, okay? So a lot of people come to me and they say, LT, I want to be a full-time author. I want to quit my job. I want to be, you know, out there. I want to be on stage. I want to do, you know, conferences and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, you got to be real strategic, 
you got to be real strategic. Okay. Let's read this first sentence again. And I want you to write this in your notes. Authors can expect to make book writing an, an only living resource if they have multiple books on the go, know how to market them well, and have an active and enthusiastic fan base. That means thousands and thousands of readers that are actively on your email list communicating with you and asking you for more books. That's what that means. Many factors influence how much an author earns each year, such as books sold, royalties, and printing costs. No two writers can make the same amount of money if they are writing differently. Revenues vary depending on the route picked for your publication, whether traditional, we talked a little bit about traditional, and we talked about self-publishing. Here are the average author payments for both routes. Okay, so you've got the revenue on the far left, you've got traditional in the middle, and you've got self-pub on the right. So the book retail price for traditional versus self-pub might be the same. But if you look at the initial royalty rate, the traditional author is going to get a 10% royalty rate and the self-published author says 60% royalty rate. So it's like six times more, right? Being a self-published author. The income per book is $1.79 for traditional authors and $5.74 for self-pub. Income per book, 6,000 income per book, 6,000. But if you look at the earnings in total for the year, if you're a traditionally, traditionally published author, you can expect to earn around $10,000 a year. If you are a self-published author, you can expect to earn about $34,000 a year. So if you're a self-pub author, you're gonna earn three times more than being a traditionally published author. And that's why. I love being a self-published author. That's my jam because when it comes to the money, there's more money. All right. Here's another one of my clients, Mr. Christie. Mr. Christie also had a book just like Kelvin. He wrote it 20 years ago. He didn't know what to do with it. It was on the shelf collecting dust. I was like, get out here. Come on. Let's get this book done. I explained to him what to do. He went home and did his homework. He did it all by himself, came back and said, hey, I followed the steps. I did what you told me to do. And now I have this book. Here's your copy. I was like, what? He goes, what do I do now? I said, oh, we about to go on the road. So this is him and I at our local library. We taught in the same city, but not at the same time. And I love what he says. He says, she has encouraged me to go to conferences and join writers groups. All in all, Latasha Jimerson has made her passion for writing an instrument for all writers to follow. This is my life. This is the love of my life. This is what I do all day long. I love it. I hope you can see the passion. Drop a heart in the chat if you can see the passion. It's just what I do. I was born for it. I went to school when I was three. I was in the Head Start program. My favorite part of the process was sitting in school like this on the carpet, crisscross applesauce, waiting for my teacher to read story time, boys and girls. That was my favorite time in school. When I grew up, became a history teacher, became an English teacher, love to tell the kids stories, love to sit and have the kids sit crisscross applesauce and love, love, love to tell the story. Whatever the story was, I love to tell it, okay? So this is what I do. This is what I love. What have we learned? We've learned that my five-step process is easy. It's simple. It's doable, but it's happening all at the same time. So it can get overwhelming. OK, so we've learned about the writing, the revising, the advertising and announcing, the publishing and the selling. These are the five parts of my framework. And when you work them, they will work for you. Again, for those of you that need editing services, I created for you a subscription service. This is only available this week. 
This is something that I do not offer to people who are not inside of my workshops because if you go to the market and you ask an editor, what does it cost for professional editing? The cost is based on the word count and the page count. And a good professional editor is going to charge you anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500, depending on how long the book is, how many pages, and if they also offer formatting, which most of them don't, that's going to be another couple hundred dollars. And if they're going to publish it for you, that's another couple hundred dollars. For people who are in my community who are watching this training, either with me live or on the replay, this is the only week that I will be offering this. It is unlimited editing. This is a subscription service. And here are the benefits of membership. You will get unlimited feedback and critique from me. I'm a professional editor. I also have another editor on my team who will be helping me. Um, you will get basically a professional editor in your pocket all the time, okay? We will focus on one book project at a time. You saw some of my clients had multiple book products going at once. Those clients paid me 3,000, 5,000, my highest package is 10,000 for a 90 day program. You are getting my professional expertise for a fraction of that, okay? You're also gonna get, but wait, there's more, monthly coaching calls, accountability for publishing your book, right? You're gonna get the feather approach and the belt approach, depending on what you need. Right. You'll get gentle reminders or you'll get, hey, what are you doing? Snap out of it. Let's go. Um, and we now accept all genres. So I told you that my jam is nonfiction. But if you are a fiction author and you are listening to this, I do have another editor who focuses on fiction. And so if you want to write more than one genre, you can as a part of this program. And you can pause your subscription at any time with no questions asked, okay? So this package, if you take this deal this week, it is $5.97 per, per month or $5K paid in full, you decide. If you were to go to the market right now and Google professional editing services, at the bare minimal, you'll find $1,200, $1,500, $1,800 for a standard six by nine book, which is of anywhere from 80 to 90 to 100 pages. I am giving you that type of service at the highest level for $597 per month or $5K paid in full. So at this point, the training is done. And what I'm going to do now is stop the recording and take any questions. If you are watching this on the replay, you must, must, must take advantage of this deal before June 1st. We are in the last week of June. It is your time to make a decision as to what you're going to do with the rest of your year. We are almost into quarter three. Half of the year is gone. The other half of the year is holiday season. You are at the point now where if you get your book done in the next 30, 60, 90 days, you will have an avalanche of holiday sales. I'm not just talking about a little small book launch. If you work with me and you do what you're supposed to do, you will have an avalanche of sales. You will hit all of your goals, all of your targets. And I will throw in for you because I love you. And I haven't had to use my belt yet tonight. <laughs> I will throw in the 12 month planner. And so I will walk you through how to plan your sales for the next 12 months and how to hit those targets by looking ahead and planning backwards. Okay. So that is my offer. That is my deal. And I look forward to seeing you in my program. Bye now.